This program is a presentation of NET Connects in partnership with the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources. Water is obviously a really important issue, and that's because without water here in Nebraska, we wouldn't be living here. We wouldn't be working here. We wouldn't be raising our, our families here. And if we don't have that water in order to drink, in order to water our crops, then you're not going to survive. There's no way of making it. That's the only thing. Something like oil, they can come up with uh, something else to take the place. What can you take the place of water? DNR employees work very hard on behalf of the state of Nebraska and their citizens to have a very productive, fun, and safe place to live. Fishing, boating, skiing, jet skiing, uh, just swimming. Dams give us the opportunity to, to do that sort of recreation. So we've got all it takes to really raise good crops and feed a lot of people. I think that's why everyone should really care about the water resources of Nebraska and want to know that, that those water resources are, are being well cared for and well managed. And that's what we do at the department. Water is central to all life. It can sustain or destroy. Water is vital and unpredictable. Nebraskans are well aware that water is one of the state's most valuable resources and that it must be protected. The Nebraska Department of Natural Resources is the watchdog of Nebraska's water supply, protecting the future of the state's water resource and the people of the state from water-related property destruction like flooding and drought. The Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, which is often referred to as DNR, protects the irrigators and the cities and municipalities all across this state through a water rights permitting program, through a very active safety of dams program, as well as the floodplain management program. Having the floodplain mapped is a significant component um, for a community to participate in the, the flood insurance program that's administered by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. A floodplain is the low-lying area near a stream or river that is more likely to flood in a major rainfall event. The growth of communities has altered the way watersheds handle these events. Obviously, when you have areas along a stream that are grasslands or wetlands, those areas can uh, soak up a lot more water than when those same areas turn into rooftops and parking lots, and the water runs off much more rapidly. The department helps local communities to map those floodplains. We develop the information that shows where we may need to make improvements to the streams and their ability to convey water during high water events. Some urban centers have used the research and recommendations of the Department of Natural Resources to develop solutions to curb the impacts of urban development. One example is the Antelope Valley Project in Lincoln. A big part of the purpose of that project was to increase basically the amount of water that can flow down Antelope Creek without it coming out of its banks and flooding homes and businesses. Another solution to limit flooding is construction of flood control dams. The Nebraska Department of Natural Resources issues permits and approves construction plans to ensure sound engineering. Flood control dams are there to protect lives and property, but we also have to ensure that they're maintained in a safe manner so that they will be able to operate as they're designed when those significant flood events occur. Tim Gokey has spent his career with the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources with a goal of preventing dam failures. We have over 2,800 dams in the state. We classify those into four different categories based on hazard class. So we have uh, high hazard potential, significant, low, and minimal. High hazard potential means if the dam were to fail, we think it's likely that there would be loss of life downstream. Uh, so these dams are typically located in populated areas, or they're very large dams that if they were to fail, they're going to affect a large area and a lot of people. There's a lot of flood control reservoirs around the cities. One of those reservoirs in an, in an urban area is the Skyview Dam. This dam is made of compacted soil, so it's a large earthen embankment. It's a large vegetated earthen embankment uh, constructed across the stream. 
upstream of the dam, we have a large reservoir area that's, that's there to provide flood protection for the city of Norfolk. Skyview Lake Dam is, is a high hazard potential dam, so we're required to do an annual inspection. Nothing major. The dam safety crew reviews previous inspection reports and notifies the owner of the dam, who's responsible for repairs. The Skyview Lake Dam is owned by the city of Norfolk. As we inspect this, the big thing that we're looking for is we want to make sure this structure isn't blocked with any debris, because this needs to be ready to handle whatever rainfall we have. Is that anything, a little rodent hole? We're also looking at the structure itself to make sure, you know, is it in good shape? Is it starting to deteriorate? Skyview Dam passed the visual inspection. Now it's time to look deeper using special tools. So this is our remote operated camera. Uh, it allows us to inspect conduits that run through dams. A lot of our conduits have concrete pipe and the joints can become separated. We also are looking for things like obstructions. So if the pipe is blocked, that's probably been the most common thing we found is conduits. We, we think they're open, but we, we drive the camera up and there'll be rocks blocking the conduit. Uh, we've also seen corn stalks wedged into conduits and, and uh, won't allow water to pass through. Our role is to protect the people who work and live downstream of dams. Storing large quantities of water above ground is just inherently a, a dangerous activity. If a dam were to fail, it can have impacts for miles and miles downstream. In Nebraska, we never had a fatality due to a dam failure, and we don't want one. And we don't want it to take a failure to get people's attention. Some of Nebraska's dams protect people from too much water, but the Department of Natural Resources also issues permits to protect water users from not having enough. When somebody wants to withdraw water directly out of a stream, they have to come to us and, and get a permit for that. The real function of getting a permit from the department to use that water is so that you now have a right to that water and you'll be protected from other users that, that come after you. At the Department of Natural Resources, water rights is one of the most important roles that we accomplish. We have a team of over 100 employees in the Lincoln headquarters office and also through five field offices, which are located closer to the water users of this state. In the 1800s, that's when they realized they had to have measuring sites for this because how are you going to administer the water properly when you have first in time, first in right? Those five field offices are critical to the agency. They are our eyes and our boots on the ground keeping an eye on the water supply conditions and also enforcing the distribution of the water under the water laws of the state of Nebraska. We run 125 monitoring stations. Tom Hayden has been working with the Nebraska DNR since 1967 and keeps a close eye on the amount of water in western Nebraska's streams and rivers to make sure water users' rights are protected through a process called stream gauging. So you have depth, width and velocity. That's what we're trying to get. And now we'll take these soundings all the way across the bridge. Depth 1.4. Stream gauging data also helps the Department of Natural Resources understand peak flows and average flows, which indicate flood potential and the overall water supply. We're going to measure this because of the people that use our monitoring stations are the, the Weather Service, the Corps of Engineers, the uh, our local irrigation districts, there's a lot of entities that call those sites daily and try to get data. To gather other types of data from around the state, the Nebraska DNR has reached out to private citizens to record and share information of their own. After you get a rain, the first thing you ask your neighbor or the first person you meet is how much did it rain last night? Any Rain stands for the Nebraska Rainfall Assessment and Information Network. The network connects more than 700 Nebraskans, answering the question, did you get any rain? Every morning at 7 o'clock, rain or shine, you go out and check that rain gauge. Sometimes it's in the rain. We put the, enter the time we did it, and we also enter the amount. They also provide critical reporting on other aspects of storms and precipitation, namely hail and snowfall, snow pack thickness, as well as the water content in that snow. From gardeners to farmers, anyone with internet access can visit the site and use the information to make decisions about their own water use. I've got neighbors that have farms 20 miles apart. They may be able to check that any rain 
and see that it rained at home, I can't work here, but I can go over to the other place. Successful farmers have always kept detailed weather records. However, the more data surrounding an operation, the better off we are. They're like our army of data collectors when it comes to precipitation. The data is used in many ways, such as flood prediction, drought monitoring, and by insurance adjusters to assess hail damage. Keep in mind that this particular type of rain gauge is a very precise instrument, and therefore the data is accepted by the National Weather Service as official records. We're aiming for one in every township on a rural basis and one in every section in an urban areas, but that high density really improves the quality of the data when you look at the overall picture. I've always been one that felt that the more information, accurate information that you can get, the, the more likely you are to make good decisions. So you got to get some way to preserve that water because I want my great grandchildren to be able to have water. Although a majority of Nebraska's water supply originates as precipitation falling within its borders, additional sources carry water across state lines. When we have an interstate stream and water originates, say, in one state and may or may not flow into the downstream state, depending on what the upstream state is doing with that water, that may leave the downstream state without a water supply. Obviously, they need some water supply, so states have to work together to make sure that the water is shared in a reasonable way. A major aspect of some cross-boundary agreements is the protection of endangered species. Another important consideration is ensuring the security of Nebraska's water supply in times of drought. When dry conditions make surface water less available, groundwater becomes a more heavily used source. The primary component associated with the security of the water supplies in the state of Nebraska is directly related to the extensive groundwater aquifer system underlying the state of Nebraska. Think of rainfall like income and groundwater as a savings account. If the income isn't pouring in, you may dip into your reserved savings. But when the income starts pouring back in, it's important to replenish the funds in your savings account as a backup plan for future times of need. Under its most basic explanation, groundwater is simply the water that is beneath the surface of the ground. It's water that is stored in the soil pores and spaces in the soils, as well as in the fractures of the geologic rock formations that underlie the surface. Surface water, quite obviously, is on the surface. It's the water in our streams, our creeks, natural lakes, in our ocean. Groundwater and surface water are in hydrologic connection with each other. Our rivers and streams are affected by groundwater use in this state. And equally as important, surface water can recharge the groundwater sources. So the hydrologic connection issue between surface and groundwater supplies really works both ways. We have scientists and experts in the Department of Natural Resources that study these kinds of issues extensively. They have the expertise, the background, and the modeling tools to be able to make the projections so that we can be assured of a long-term sustainable groundwater supply for the state. We maintain a statewide well registration database so that we know where all of the, the holes that we've poked in the ground are across the state, really valuable information. One requirement that we have for water wells is that they can't be spaced too closely together. And if you own one well and I drill a well and right next to your property line and that's where your well is, I'm going to affect your well. So there's statutes that say it has to be 600 feet because my well is going to impact yours. And if your well was in there first, you have the rights on that well. So we do have spacing for the consumption of the, of the water because you don't want to affect someone else's consumption. Nobody wants to turn on the faucet uh, in the morning and not have water come out of the tap. Through that program, we help ensure that that won't happen. We take proactive steps to protect our groundwater. So we obviously can't make good, good decisions on, on how much water we should use if we don't know how much water we're using and if we don't know how much water we have. 
So that's a, a big role that the department plays in Nebraska is to uh, pull together lots of scientific data and information and tools in order to be able to say what our water uses are and what our water supplies are. Much of the information gathered by the Nebraska DNR is made available to the public online, such as a recent initiative called Insight, an integrated network of scientific information and geohydrologic tools. So for example, you might live in, in Valentine, Nebraska, and you might be interested in what types of water uses occur on the Niobrara River. Insight provides that information. And furthermore, if we wanted to make further use, say, of the Niobrara River for um, anything from in-stream uses to irrigation, we can look and see if that water is available. Behind all of the data available on Insight is a team of scientists, data collectors, analysts, and planners who are using the information about both surface water and groundwater to develop an integrated water management plan for Nebraska's future. To look at both surface water, such as stream flow, groundwater systems, and you know those are intertwined and interconnected, and to manage them is very important for our livelihood and our economic uh, condition of our state. How are we tracking down the water supplies, water use, uh, the groundwater, surface water? Is it enough? Do we need more? And so we get those answers, uh, scientific answers, and then, then we'll try to manage this whole surface water and groundwater systems as one big uh, component rather than uh, managing it separately. The NRDs are responsible for groundwater management, the department's responsible for surface water management, but we all know that them, them are not two separate, in, two separate items, and so the research that we do uh, overlies with the research that they do, and, and uh, we can, if we do that research jointly, we're both saving money and, and we're coming to a, to a common goal or working towards a common goal. We can manage our, our aquifer just like we do our surface water supplies. We see Lake McConaughey come up, we see Lake McConaughey go down. We don't think about managing our aquifers that way, but we can. In dry years, we need to use our aquifers as that buffer, and in wet years, we need to re replenish them. The whole integrated water management is a partnership between the Natural Resources District and the uh, Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, where we try to work together and manage these water resources, the surface water system and the groundwater system yeah. together. This collaborative system is unique to Nebraska. Research and planning happens at the statewide level by the Department of Natural Resources. And 23 natural resources districts oversee groundwater in more localized areas. We have three canals out there that uh, we have done some, some pretty major rehabilitation on in the Dawson County area. The Department of Natural Resources has been a, a partner in that uh, since the very beginning. The area that these three canals are in that we worked with um, are actually in our over-appropriated area. Through our integrated management planning with the Department of Natural Resources, we explored different options about how we could put water back in the river and have the least effect on, on everyone in, or on the state as a whole. Yeah, the foresight of the Water Resources Cash Fund really laid the foundation for, for these to, to work for us. Here at the Cozad Ditch Headgates, water is diverted from the Platte River into irrigation ditches that reach thousands of irrigated acres between Gothenburg and Lexington. In 2011, the Central Platte NRD and the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources joined forces to rehabilitate the century-old canals. This is just a Rubicon gate that we installed in, the, in this system. There's an, I think there's a dozen Rubicon gates in the Cozad Canal throughout our system. Uh, they allow us to uh, measure the flow and, and also measure the loss in different reaches of our system. Normally, them gates would only be open an inch or two to let a little bit of water through right now. Um, because of the excess flows coming out of the South Platte to right now, as you can see, we have a lot more water than we normally do. The primary purpose of the canals is irrigation, but in times of crisis, they can be used to divert high flows. By adjusting the gates, the Central Platte NRD staff can control how much water is drawn off of the river and divert it into the canals. The science behind what, what we're doing that wasn't available 10 or 15 years ago uh, 
not only helps the state as a whole, it also helps right. our local producers that are on this canal and our local groundwater pumpers that may or may not be a part of the canal. The state of Nebraska has more irrigated acres than any other state in the country. The department, working together with the natural resource districts, helps to determine that that irrigation water supply will be sustainable over the long term. Working with them, I, I think it's probably made the NRDs a stronger agency, and I think the NRDs have probably made the Department of Natural Resources a stronger agency because of our ability to get stuff done, uh, not only on the local level, but on the state level. There's no way the canals could have done it by themselves. There's no way we could have done it with, with ourselves. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them as a partner. The South Side Irrigation District and the COZAD Canal Project were funded through the DNR's Water Resources Cash Fund. Another source of funding for water-related projects is the Natural Resources Commission, which is supported by the DNR. The Natural Resources Commission is a 27-member is a commission. 13 of those uh, members are elected in basin caucuses. The other 14 members are appointed by the governor. Each one of those is intended to represent a certain stakeholder interests. The overall goal and purpose of the Natural Resources Commission is to oversee the distribution of, of a number of funds that the department um, is allocated by the legislature and ensure that those funds are used um, in the best way that they, they should be used. One of the really important parts of our planning process is the stakeholder process that goes into developing our, our water plans. There's a lot of different people that have a stake in the decisions we make about water, and we have to get all of those viewpoints from all of those various stakeholders so that we can come up with a good comprehensive plan that addresses all of our stakeholder needs. It's important to remember that although Nebraska is a largely agrarian state, nearly two thirds of Nebraska's water users live in urban areas. The Metropolitan Utilities District has been delivering water to the Omaha area for over 100 years. I, th I think we tend to accentuate our differences, you know, between city dwellers and, and uh, rural people. We have those same basic needs within our homes for, for our basic needs, of course. And then, and then beyond that, it's those extra uses. There's, there's crop irrigation in, in uh, some of the ag areas. Uh, that's very important very important to Nebraska's economy to be able to do that. And we're fortunate in Nebraska, we have a lot of water. The Florence plant is 125 years old. Joel Christensen oversees water treatment and distribution to about 600,000 Nebraskans. So first of all, in order to be able to use the Missouri River and the Platte River, uh, we get permission from the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, secondly, they protect those sources, the surface water, so uh, that's extremely important that those sources be available long term. The Platte River is a major source of Omaha's water and the primary source for Lincoln. For miles and miles upstream, water users have access to Platte River flows, which could impact the metro areas downstream. So in, in the water planning that we do, we have to ensure that we have a balance between upstream users and downstream users so that the cities of Lincoln and Omaha will have a, a reliable water supply into the future. We have a system that's fairly resilient. If we get to a point to where we, we can't serve all the water that our customers want for whatever reason. So of course, non-essential uses of water such as lawn watering would be the first things we would ask people to curtail. If it got very serious, of course, we would, we would mandate that they uh, discontinue those type of uses. I think Nebraska is in a uniquely good situation with a lot of water. That doesn't mean we can't overuse it. One of the most promising ways to encourage conservation measures is through public awareness. The more Nebraskans who actively seek to preserve the bountiful water resource, the more likely that resource will continue to thrive. You know, we can have uh, the best data and, and scientific models and tools in the world, but if we're not conveying that information in a way that the public can understand, we're really missing out on a big opportunity. From a typical farmer to public agencies, local bodies, to universities, uh, 
any people that are interested, uh, we serve that to share that information. Back in the DNR, when we talk about a groundwater model, we're talking about a lot of giant computer files with, with fancy computer programs and that kind of thing. And, and that's not really meaningful to, to, to most people, and that's certainly understandable. Yeah, you can see here. See. We have a physical model um, that, that shows an aquifer and a lake and a, and, a, and a river. We can use those physical models out at events like Earth Day events and, 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 and other public events. They can see, for example, then what happens when a groundwater well starts pulling water out of the ground. This house definitely has water in the basement. <laughs> I think it's just great that they get to learn and see these like perfect models of how our environment should be and things we can do to make it better. This experience I'll remember for a while, uh, so that that's good too. And I feel like I'm a little more aware of what's going on with our water runoff, which is also a pretty good thing. Hopefully then when they see a, a center pivot irrigating corn as they drive across Nebraska, they have a better understanding of, of how that impacts the ground, but also how that groundwater resource is able to recover. You can read in the news quite frequently how other states are having some groundwater source problems. That's simply not the case here in the state of Nebraska. We have a very unique, strategic, and cooperative groundwater management planning system. I think Nebraskans have overwhelmingly realized that it's very important with water to be very proactive in how we manage it. And, and really everything we do within water management emphasizes that proactive approach. Well, the thing all of us can do for, to protect our water and to, to, to keep it reliable is, first of all, don't, don't overuse it, don't waste it. We know here in the state of Nebraska how important water is because water links to crops, links to people's livelihood. We're blessed in this state with good water and good soil, and we need to take care of it so the next generations can, can do the same thing. We need to look into the future and, and, and know that we're going to have water supplies for all of our water users uh, far into the future. From their water resources, well registration, uh, surface water rights, uh, floodplain management, Nebraska's lucky to have uh, a, an active Department of Natural Resources that, that are willing to work with the local NRDs and, and uh, get a lot done. Because of all the hard work of the employees of the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, Nebraskans and water users all across this state can feel assured that they're going to have water today and that they will have water tomorrow.